All right, everybody, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. Now, on the eve of update point 22, I figured it would be about time to, you know, get back to some good old Kerbal Space Program tutorials. Now, I figured I would start off with a fairly basic tutorial, and I would show you guys how to build a satellite. So, this isn't really a coined method of building a satellite. I mean, I just figured it would be an interesting video, and a lot of you would probably be interested in seeing how to do it. Now, this was a bit of a prototype I worked around with as the Z-Mapper, but um, I think we should probably start new with this one. So, we'll just build it from the ground up, and, you know, it'll just be an interesting-looking thing. So, this, um, I figure we can build this satellite with regards to using this squared little guy right here, the Probo dying QBE because it's got um, all faces have bonding ports on them so basically you can mount say a you know like one of these cool little uh, commutatrons these would be cool or you know like you can put yourself on some radar dishes because you know everybody wants to see one of those now I do have some mods installed right now however they're not really um, tied to building the satellite today so much so as propulsion like these guys we'll uh, focus on that when it comes to a future episode so whenever you want to build a satellite it is always extremely important to have yourself plenty and plenty of solar panels now, I figure because this is going to be a big satellite, you know, we're going to use this thing for a lot of different purposes, it'd be interesting to see it go across the sky at night. And what better way to do that than to equip this thing with some big daddy o lights, like maybe some of these big Illuminator Mark IIs, because everyone likes a good Illuminator Mark II. Let's just see if that will give us a better angle. Does not seem like it. All right, so let's just put some about four of these on here like so, so we can see our entire satellite, because that would just absolutely be fantastic. All right, so we are just going to continue to bond more and more of these Probodyne QBEs to the finished product. Now, in between, usually what I like to do when I build a satellite is, you know, put some of these Communitron 16s, because, you know, uh, what purpose is this satellite unless it's able to communicate back with Kerbal Command and, you know, receive orders to do some surveillance? Over, you know, the dreaded, whatever, the anti Kerbal Co. over there that's, you know, striving day in and day night to, you know, thwart, or no, thwart the Kerbal research. Yes, indeed. Now, I figure a better way to do this would actually probably be to. Here, I think I've got a, I've got a better idea. Here, let's just make this an odd numbered pallet right here so we can have a junction point right here, a median, if you will, and let's just put some lights here. Let's see if we can do like two opposite guided lights like uh let's put these ones up right here here let me see ah oh, yes there we go so we'll be able to see up and let's see if we can do some of these seeing down oh yeah look at this they they are kind of bonding right there but hey it's not a big deal you know bonding is always good time good time indeed all right and we're gonna get these one by six photovoltaic panels yes indeed <laughs> all right so let's just strap a couple of these guys on right here oh yeah look at that fantastic and we're also going to want to have some of these Communitron Mark 16s. All right, so we'll get about two of these for every side like so, just so we'll be able to have enough space to work for, you know, all of our different, you know, we can just put on some science stuff here because, you know, everybody likes a little bit of science because, you yeah, know, everybody loves science. All right, so let's just see. Let's just put on an accelerometer right here because, you know, what satellite is complete without an accelerometer as well as a thermometer? Because, you know, we're going to be mapping Kerbal with, or not Kerbal, a uh, Kerbin with this. So, you know, it's going to be helpful to know what temperature it is at what part of its orbit because, you know, scientists are interested in that kind of thing. Now, this is our basic satellite right here, so it'll have plenty power for the job and you know we could strap on a battery in these empty spots right here why not we'll just put on two batteries it's always a good idea so we'll have plenty of space and uh, storage power oh yes look at that right there to stow some of those batteries on so we'll be able to see everything we'll be getting all the signals back to Kerbal Command we've got a big Communitron up top that'll help us map out the surface of Kerbin and everything so yeah that is looking absolutely phenomenal so we're going to have to put on ourselves you know I usually like to detach these the, um, the satellites or if I have like a probe I usually like to detach them with a docking port because you know it's not as forceful as a your typical you know like decoupler so yeah it's it's a better idea in my opinion you can um, try it with a your typical decoupler although the force might break apart since I do have these solar panels on the bottom it may prove a bit you know unstable so let's just see how we're going to work this now since this is just a satellite we're gonna get up into about 100 100,000 to 150,000 feet orbit we won't make this too big of a rocket you know it's just gonna be something nice and simple so let's just get ourselves say Oh boy, with all these mods installed, I find it difficult to find my stock parts. I guess that's a bit of a drawback right there.
All right, everybody, we are on the launch pad with some minor altercations. Alrighty, so we are ready to head to the stars and get our geo mapping and spy satellite into orbit. So let's do this. Actually, you know what? I was about to launch this with the incorrect procedures. All right, here we go. Let's just put these guys down here like so. Looking good. All right, this should be good. All right, so three, two, one. Let's do this. Bam. Look at this, it's fantastic, we're already off to a great start now. As a rule of thumb, if any of you watch Scott Manley, you'll know this very well, that you do not want to get your uh, meters per second on the surface, you know, before you leave the atmosphere, over 200 meters per second, because that'll lead to some issues in the long run. Like, you'll be wasting a lot of fuel, and you don't want to waste fuel while you're in the lower atmosphere. Lower atmosphere being under 10,000 meters. So yeah, we'll just wait till we get about there, and then, you know, once we get to a safe, nice little, um, we had, once we get to about our orbit marking of 35,000 meters above curb and surface, we'll do our nice little burns so we'll be able to get into a circular orbit. Now, I reckon a good satellite orbit would be around, I don't know, say 100,000, anywhere from 100,000 to 200,000 feet or um, meters above curb and surface. So, you know, that's uh, just a rule of thumb kind of for, you know, a spy satellite. Spy satellites tend to be pretty low, you know, like 50 to 100,000, but since this is a geo mapping, Geo mapping slash spy satellite. We should be able to. It'll cut it around 100 to 150 thousand. So we'll aim right around there. Maybe we'll meet the best of both worlds and get 125 thousand. You know, just 100 thousand orbits easy to meet, and you know it's not too troublesome. Now, don't be um, scared. I mean, I know <laughs> scared. Uh, don't be worried if you don't have these engines. It's a part of a mod. I understand that. I just wanted to try out. I, uh, a new type of engine, you know, just to, you know, keep things new. And that also, as a rule of thumb, if you, if you watch Scott Manley, um, a burn over or like you're doing a nice little 90 degree uh, slant over at 10,000 meters above carbon surfaces, you know, another thing just to, you know, get accumulate as much delta V as possible while leaving the atmosphere. Looking good. We're about to drop our external tanks and then our tank right here will fill all the way up. As you can see, these fuel lines are feeding fuel into the central tank, so then this will go all the way back up once they go out. So yeah, check that out. We've got brand new fuel. We don't have any space junk. They're going back to the surface. Oh yeah, that's what I like to see. Alright, so we'll just try and get our Apoapsis to about 100,000. You know, that shouldn't be too hard to achieve. See as though we have pretty much a full tank of fuel, so you know we'll have enough time to do our maneuvers and what have you before we run out of fuel and drop our tank behind us. I don't think fuel will be a big issue you know, seeing as though this, uh, we have a Rocco Max, and it's a jumbo Rocco Max, a big orange tank. You know, these things are infamous for having extra fuel even when you don't need it. And then when you, d you actually do need them, you know, you kind of find yourself short. But <laughs> that is just a rule of Kerbal Space Program in general. So let's get ourselves at a nice 100,000 meter per, or um, apoapsis right here. I always want to say meter per second for whatever reason. I'm not sure why. <laughs> All right, so let's just circularize our orbit like so. Now, if you're not very savvy with the maneuver node system, it's not a big deal or anything like that. It's, um, these, uh, the, you see the one that looks kind of like the end of an airplane? It extends your or it circularizes an orbit, whereas you know the X through the tail actually closes it. So let's just see 102. We want to have like both fairings at you know like um, right around 100,000. So if it's a bit off, that's okay. It's not a massive deal. All right. So look at that 100,000 and 137,000. That's a bit off here. Also, let's just try 96, 108. That's probably about as good as we're going to do it. Now, the closer you get them together, the more circular the orbit's going to be. But since this is a satellite that we're probably not going to mess with ever again, it's not going to be a major deal. Now, let's just say you want to have a really maneuverable space or um, satellite and you want to actually, you know, it's safe sometimes or you want to take it to a different planet someday. You might want to strap um, a nuclear engine to it or an ion engine, but you're going to need some gigantor solar panels to power an ion engine because because those things take a massive amount of power from your um, it's a, it takes a lot of electrical power. I think you need xenon gas to power them too. So yeah, that's a consideration. But this is just a basic satellite that will orbit around Kerbin. And it will give us information about, you know, the Kerbin surface and any enemy mobilizations from other continents. You know, let's just say like down here on this island, they're going to, whoever it may be is going to, oh, I'm about to miss a maneuver. No, no, here, here we go. <laughs> but let's just say they're building themselves another space center that rivals that of, you know, maybe Jebediah has gone rogue. I know Jebediah would never do that. I'd just say theoretically, the worst case scenario. Jebediah goes rogue and builds his own space center, and he brings along all of his, uh, you know, his, his, you know, quick wit and his explosive personality. Well, that can make for some issues, but this satellite will pick up on any plots like that. So yeah, that would be a, a bit of a thing right there. All right, so we overshot it just a bit. You know, it's not a massive deal. So 140,000 to 99,000. That's kind of off, but you know, it's 
we're not really looking for perfection here. We're just looking to get a satellite in orbit. Now, since we really don't need this tank anymore, it'll eventually um, descend back to the planet Kerbin. But what we want to do now is right click on the Clampotron Jr. and decouple node. All right, look at that. And this thing is free floating now. So if you want to go back and forth between the space junk now and your satellite, just press the left bracket key and the right bracket key should be right above the enter key on your keyboard. All right, and look at this thing. It is ready to go. Now you can't tie your solar panels to action groups so they all go in unison. I always thought that looked really cool and um, whenever a satellite did that, it had, or like in Kerbal Space Program, when somebody has their action groups and everything just looks like really synonymous, I always think that looks really cool. All right, so as you can see, our nice little Rocket Max back here will eventually go back to the surface so it won't clutter up the atmosphere or you know like the sphere of influence all right so let's just extract all of these communitrons right here just so this thing looks you know spick and span we've got our thermometer let's turn this thing on it's telling us what the temperature it is is probably cold as balls up in space all right so let's just turn all these guys on look at that we've got all of our you know we can communicate with Kerbin now and look at this let's turn on our lights look at that looking spick and span let's just turn this thing let's see if we're losing power actually um, we are not losing power. We are gaining more power than we're using. That's good. This thing is extremely maneuverable and the, the toggle torque is maneuverable. I mean, it charges up. It's on electricity. And look at that. We can just point it right at the planet curb and we can, you know, like maneuver it all. Or, you know, we won't point it up there or towards, um, you know, Jebediah's supposed location. Just look at that. It looks fantastic. So everybody, that's really all for this tutorial. If you're interested in seeing more tutorials, make sure to, you know, let me know in the comments down below if you're interested in seeing how to make a specific tutorial. Well, make sure to let me know also. But that's really all, everybody, and I'll see you all very soon.